Let's say you need to send a binary message, but it must be sent over a noisy channel. By noisy, we mean the channel will randomly flip each bit with probability f. So if f is 0.1, the message received will have about 10% of its bits different from the original message sent. That's the problem. Now to handle this, you and the receiver can agree upon some procedure before you start sending messages. That is, you will encode the message in a special way so that it can handle noise. Once received, the receiver will decode the noisy message to determine what you intended. So how might you do this? Well, one simple way is to just repeat each bit, say, three times, and have the receiver interpret each block of three with the most common bit. In our example, this means we'd encode our original message as a redundant string repeating each bit three times. The encoded message is then passed through the noisy channel, which flips some bits. Now, the receiver knows we're repeating bits three times, but doesn't know which bits are flipped. So they interpret each chunk of three as the most common bit, since that's the most likely intended bit. So the first three bits are all ones, so that's interpreted as a one. The second chunk has two zeros, so that's read as a zero. And this continues. Now, if we compare the original and decoded messages, we see we've made no errors. In general, over a lot of messages, this strategy creates fewer than the 10% errors we'd expect if we just sent the original messages straight through. But errors can still happen. On another pass through the channel, we might have gone unlucky with two or more bits flipped in one chunk. And that would create an error in the decoded message. So the error probability is reduced, but not eliminated. Now the question is, is this the best we could have done? When it comes to the error probability, no. If we repeated bits 10 times instead of three times, that would have a much smaller error probability. But that's not all we care about. Doing that also slows our message down by 10 times. So we also care about speed. So let's imagine two dimensions. Along the horizontal axis is the rate, measuring the speed of the message. And along the vertical is the probability of a bit error. I'll define these terms exactly in a second, but first, let's label the coding strategies. We say RD is the coding strategy where we repeat each bit D times, and the receiver reads the most common bit in each size D chunk. Earlier we saw R3, and talked about the slower but safer R10. Also, R1 is the no coding strategy. That's where you just send the message straight through. Now we can place these. R1 goes here. It has a rate of one and a bit error probability of 0.1, which is the channel's flip probability. For this to make sense, we need to define the axes. The probability of bit error is the average probability a decoded bit does not match the intended message bit. This is what we were bringing down earlier. Next, the rate is the ratio of the original message length to the encoded message length, which is a relative measure of speed. For R1, no encoding, that ratio is one. For R3, it's one third, because we're encoding the message as something three times longer. So it's slower, but it enjoys a better bit error probability. In fact, this is what all the repeating strategies look like. In general, coding strategies are better in this direction. Okay, now here's the literal trillion dollar question. Out of all coding strategies, what region in this space is achievable? That sounds hard. We need to consider all possible coding strategies. Damn. Well, here's a reasonable idea. Whatever the separation is between achievable and unachievable, it goes through the origin. So maybe it looks like this, or this, or this. Whatever it is, the separation goes through the origin. Meaning if you want an extremely small error probability, you'll need to suffer extremely slow rates. Seems totally obvious, and yet is totally wrong. In 1948, Claude Chan surprised everyone by proving it looks like this where this length is known as the channel capacity C, and it's what makes this result remarkable. What this says is, you can communicate at an arbitrarily small bit error probability at a rate up to the channel's fundamental limit C. Consider our example with flip probability 0.1. That means the capacity is about 0.53, which comes from an entropy calculation, which I won't get into. Okay, now suppose we make the ridiculous demand of a bit error probability of 10 to the minus 25, an extremely small number. How slow will we have to send our messages? Shannon says, hey, as long as it's not zero, 
there are coding strategies out there that will get you up to a rate of 0.53. So you only need to double the message length. And then you say, wow, that's great. What's the coding strategy? And Sharon says, I don't know, but they're out there. You figure it out. This is what was shown in Shannon's 1948 paper, A Mathematical Theory of Communication. The significance of this paper is hard to overstate. Not only because he proved what we just saw, but because Shannon realized this simple case generalizes to all forms of communication. And so, his paper unleashed the promise of error correcting codes. That digital information could travel across broken, messy, physical systems with essentially no corruption at tolerably fast rates. This video you see, the sound of my voice, anything you download, virtually all digital information you interact with, none of it originated where you're sitting, all of it passed through a flawed channel, but yet all of it manifests perfectly as intended. That's what he showed was possible. Okay, we're all very impressed now, but a skeptic knows to ask, what's the trick? Whenever a mathematical statement looks magical, it never actually is. So what's going on? Well, before I get into that, I have something else to offer. If you like my educational content, you can find more of it at my website, True Theta. There, I have articles on a range of topics in machine learning and statistics. If you like this channel, you'll probably like this site as well. Writing is easier than video production, so this is gonna help me communicate more information faster. Shannon would understand. Also, Truth Data is my applied math consulting business. So if you're at a company that could use some help developing algorithms, whether that's for general machine learning, or forecasting, causal inference, dynamic pricing, or something related, you can reach me from this site. Okay, back to it. To extinguish the magic regarding this region, we have to know that a coding strategy is going to take the original message, break it up into chunks of some size k, encode them as redundant chunks of some larger size n, and then pass them through the channel. And this will have a rate of k over n. As we know, k over n can be made close to the channel capacity. The trick is, this can be done by potentially making n very large. In other words, this only applies when we pass very long messages that get encoded as something even larger. So if you only want to send, say, 20 bits, Shannon can't give you an arbitrarily small error probability. Still, this is okay, because in the real world, we do send very long messages. Okay, now to caveat, we're only scratching the surface here. If you want to understand things deeply, I suggest the late David McKay's textbook, Information Theory, Inference, and Learning Algorithms. This video is based on his explanation from chapter one and a bit from chapters nine and 10. And if you don't want to crack open a textbook, his lectures are actually here on YouTube. In those lectures, you'll see him build up all the pieces to, to proving the result we saw, which is called the noisy channel coding theorem. When you watch him, it doesn't take very long to realize he was a brilliant mind and teacher. I'll link to his materials in the description. And now, the only thing left to do is to say thank you. First, thank you to my patrons. It's awesome to get this support and it gives me great confidence to keep this going. Also, thank you for watching and until next time. Points over here were achievable, but conventional wisdom probably was assuming that the boundary went somewhere here. And Shannon proved an absolutely remarkable result. And this is going to be the, the heart of this sequence of lectures to prove this result. Shannon proved that you can get the error probability arbitrarily small without the rate having to go to zero. So Shannon proved that the boundary between achievable and non-achievable points is a line that looks like this. <laughs>